For many years, Dance Dance Revolution has reigned as the king of four-panel dance games. Minus a bumpy period here and there, the series has been running strong for over 20 years, still drawing players in to this day with the recent release of DDR A3. DDR is a pillar of rhythm gaming and will likely still exist for many years to come. However, back in the mid-2000s, a different game was making the rounds during the reign of DDR Extreme's popularity in the US. And not only would it make waves at the time of release, but it would also plant a seed for the community that would grow in the years to come, even if it wasn't in the way one might expect. Enter In The Groove, henceforth referred to as IPG. IPG was a four-panel dance game not unlike DDR, created in 2004 by Rockstar Games. The game was originally released as a modification kit for existing DDR machines, though it would later get its own dedicated cabinet as well. ITG gameplay-wise is very similar to DDR, especially in terms of core gameplay, though it does have some of its own mechanics as well. Mines are a note type that penalize the player by reducing their score and life if the player is standing on the arrow that the mine is placed on when it passes the judgment zone. Additionally, rolls are a modified type of hold note that require the player to repeatedly tap the note the roll is on for the duration of the note. These mechanics help to distinguish IPG from DDR a bit, gameplay-wise. The game itself was seen as a sort of alternative to DDR, with its different mechanics, different music direction, and just overall different feel and presentation. Additionally, since ITG was built with Stepmania as a groundwork, the game was able to support custom songs. For those who are unaware, Stepmania is an open source clone of DDR's gameplay that supports the creation of custom themes, features, and more. Because IPG was based in this engine, songs were created using Stepmania's chart format, and as such, ITG was patched to allow for custom songs to be played on ITG using a USB drive. Additionally, the patch that added this feature, known as R21, had a bypass that allowed songs of any length to be added, rather than just the intended 2 minute limit. This led to a burst in the custom song scene, since putting songs onto an ITG machine was now very easy. IPG had a very short run of just two versions in 2004 and 2005. A third release was planned, but unfortunately cancelled due to Konami suing Roxor for patent and trademark infringement, among other things. While Roxor did countersue, they ended up settling, and Konami ended up acquiring the rights to In The Groove. The third game in the series never released, and ITG was no more. However, the community wasn't done yet. Since ITG was based in the Stepmania engine, there really wasn't anything stopping the ITG community from using Stepmania instead for their content. After the death of ITG, the community took things into their own hands, modifying Stepmania and creating content themselves to give them the gameplay experience they were wanting without simply going back to DDR. This is why a lot of people refer to Stepmania pad play as ITG, even if they're streaming in the Stepmania Twitch directory or if they're playing Stepmania. It's simply a carryover term from that community, generally referring to Stepmania pad play of custom songs. And I'm probably going to use the same term too. So if you hear me saying anything about playing ITG from this point forward, I am referring to Stepmania. Specifically, themes like Simply Love aim to create a similar but modernized experience of gameplay and presentation similar to ITG, with Simply Love supporting things like the original ITG score and life bar calculations. Over the years, the community would transition from playing on modified ITG to just playing on Stepmania itself, and the scene would start to really develop out from here. Ironically, ITG was really just getting started after the official games ended. From here, as the community transitioned over to Stepmania, the community would form three sub-communities of gameplay. I'm going to give a brief rundown of each community for ITG. I did my best to include all the recent developments from each one, but I am by no means a 100% expert, so if I miss something, please leave a comment below. With that, let's start off with tech. Tech gameplay in ITG focuses around accuracy play on technical charts. Usually when you refer to tech in ITG or DDR, it would be something that requires a unique movement or approach to hit, rather than just a standard set of notes that you can step on by alternating your feet left and right. A basic example of tech in ITG would be a foot switch. Seen here, there's a right arrow, two up arrows, and a left arrow. If you did this without a foot switch, it would be very awkward, either requiring you to hit the right arrow with your right foot, then both up arrows and the left arrow with your left foot, 
or requiring you to do some weird crossover with your right foot after hitting the two up arrows with your left foot. What you can do instead to play this pattern properly is to hit the first two arrows as normal, right foot on right, left foot on up, and then after hitting up, swap your left and right foot while pivoting toward the other side of the pad to hit the second up arrow, then hit the left arrow with your left foot. Doing it correctly results in a very satisfying flowing motion when transitioning your feet between the arrows. There are many different kinds of techs, such as foot switches, double steps, brackets, side switches, bracket taps, and even weirder stuff like spins or bracket crossovers. The unique thing about ITG tech is that almost all of these tech patterns do not explicitly exist in DDR, giving the game a very unique charting style when compared to DDR. Where DDR tends to lean more into gimmicks like BPM, shock arrows, and instead softer tech like implied foot switches, ITG takes a different approach focusing heavily on foot placement and movement technique with hard tech requiring certain approaches to stepping. Many tech packs are released each year, with the community producing a ton of content at all levels for tech charts. There's almost certainly something that anyone can find to break into tech gameplay. IRL tech tournaments are semi-common, sort of starting to sprout back up since 2020, but today I want to put a special spotlight on ITL. International Timing League 2022, or ITL 2022, was an online tournament slash league held last year to promote tech competition from home throughout a few months of play. It featured an absolutely ridiculous amount of content curated by the ITG community, coalesced into one giant pack that would form the basis for the tournament. Recent developments in Stepmania themes allowed them to bake built-in score submission right into the theme, allowing anyone with a connected group stats profile to hop on their pad of choice and participate in the tournament, with scores submitting straight to the ITL leaderboards for people to compete against each other. This tournament drew in a huge amount of people, with the leaderboard registering plays from over 1,000 participants. Overall, it just became a really huge celebration of the tech community. Throughout the event, the hosts would have live streams where they would showcase community clips from the event of people achieving really good scores or funny moments while playing ITL content. They even did DLC releases every few weeks of charts that they would add to the tournament pack throughout the event, giving people a reason to stick around through the whole thing to see what kind of content got added. As you'll come to see, the ITG community is extremely dedicated and generous with their time, with this being an entirely volunteer effort to create an amazing event for everyone to participate in for free. As of writing, ITL 2023 is in the works and will be coming soon. So maybe you don't want to spend your time practicing side switches or learning what a Matt Silver is. Maybe you just want to go as fast and long as you can. Well, luckily, that's where our second community comes in. Up next, we have ITG Stamina. The Stamina community is quite a bit different from the tech community, but with a similar level of dedication. ITG Stamina focuses on playing very long and dense songs, usually favoring going for clears over score. That said, there's also a subset of players known as Stam Tech who focus on playing charts that are somewhat a hybrid of tech charts and stamina charts. We won't really talk about this subset today, but just know that the players in this section of the community are often insanely good. A distinguishing feature of Stamina is that it's often charted with very little or no tech at all. Instead, chart variety is created using songs of varying breakdowns and density. You could have a chart with really chopped up, broken runs requiring lots of start and stop streaming, or you could play a chart that's an hour long and has no breaks at all, being 2,000 measures of pure stream. The variety is in the type and length of charts available to play. Stamina is also notable for its difficulty scale. Where ITG Tech generally runs from block 1 up to 14, Stamina starts around a ITG 11, but basically has no upper limit. As players in the upper level of the game push the speeds and lengths to new dimensions of foot wiggle, more difficult content is made to challenge those players and continue pushing them. So the skill ceiling in Stamina is very high. Similarly to Tech, many Stamina Packs release every year, though most of the releases coalesce just before the three main Stamina events for the year, with all three together colloquially known as Stamina Season. East Coast Stamina is the premier Stamina tournament series, running for quite a few years now. The first event of Stamina Season is an ECS.5 event. Used as a kickoff for the season and a less intensive tournament than a mainline ECS, the .5 ECS tournaments are a team or solo Stamina event. 
When the event starts, the event pack is released, and players are able to spend time working through the pack and playing the new content, often amalgamated from new packs released before that season by the community. When the tournament window starts and the teams have been formed, players submit their tournament scores as a combination of two sets, the Marathon and the Raw Output set. The Marathon is separated into splits, and the team must either perform the entire Marathon in the same place in a single sitting, or have each player play one of the splits and combine your scores together. The second set is the Raw Output set, a four hour long window where the team's players work to pass as many songs as possible in the four hour window. Only one player can play at a time, so planning is required to pace out breaks and make sure as much content as possible is passed in the time frame. The scores from these two sets combine to make up your score for whichever division you're in, lower, mid, or upper. After the point five event ends, waiting starts for the main event of the year, Stamina RPG. This is what it sounds like. It's an entire RPG built around stamina content that also serves as the qualifier for the mainline ECS tournament. Stamina RPG could make up its own video entirely, but just to give you a taste, it's an event that lasts a few months over the summer-ish months with a custom theme, integrated leaderboards and score saving, song unlocking via quests, RPG features like currency for shops and leveling up, profile customization, rivals, title unlocking, and more. It's an insanely fun event and a really good way to progress through stamina with the amount of content it has. Finally, after SRPG is the main number ECS event. This takes the form of a marathon and a raw output set as well, but are purely for solo players. They allow utilization of items acquired during stamina RPG, so there's a lot of planning that goes into what items, or relics, get used on what songs. The marathons are usually original mixes by Rems, who does a bang up job every year bringing out some totally insane stuff to play, and clearing as much stuff as you can as a solo player in roughly an hour or so is a real test of physical conditioning. All of these events are free to participate in and are largely run by Archai and a host of volunteers purely for the love of the game. More people should really check these out, and if you're already a player of stamina events, definitely consider supporting the work these guys do on this. It's seriously some of my favorite rhythm game content I've ever played, and for it to be free is insane. You don't need to be at a super high level of play to enjoy events like Stamina RPG either. Getting to 11s in stamina takes not much more than some focused effort for a short period of time, and from there, SRPG can be used as a really granular means of progression. I definitely recommend anyone who enjoys 4Panel check it out. So that's tech and stamina, the two main ways the game is played. But maybe you're not looking for something traditional. Maybe you're looking for something a little weirder. Last on our list is a little fork of Stepmania called Not ITG. Not ITG allows for a sort of variant playstyle of ITG where most of the charts are modded. Where in tech, the skill set heavily leans on being able to process and correctly step technically difficult patterns, and in stamina, the skill set is based on endurance and form, Not ITG's skill set focuses on reading ability. Charts for Not ITG are heavily visually modded using Lua scripting to create charts that are very visually difficult to read, while being a bit less technically difficult in the pattern department. The result is these insanely flashy mod charts that send arrows all over the screen, with the player being forced to deal with the onslaught of visual effects to read and hit the arrows as best as possible. They start out simple, but reach totally insane levels of visual flourish that will leave you stumbling through the chart trying to figure out what's even happening. Not ITG is really cool because there's very little limit to what the creators are able to achieve visually. There's a wide variety of charts and difficulties, and really no two charts are alike, with creators using their own visual designs to create very distinct step charts. You might have actually seen Not ITG recently on Games Done Quick, as it's been featured there a few times. I'd highly recommend checking out those runs if you want to see what kind of content Not ITG encompasses, and what high-level play can look like. There's really nothing else in dance games quite like it. Not ITG also hosts an active community, and a huge starter guide can be found on NotI.TG. Packs, Discord links, FAQ, and setup guide, all there. I don't know quite as much about Not ITG as I do Stamina and Tech, but I do know the people over there work really hard on the content, and I've always had a blast playing Not ITG here and there, so definitely go check it out. Okay, so, Tech, Stamina, and Mods. The last big question left is, where do you start? Well, the answer will vary from person to person, but the general answer is to find whatever you can and get started. You can honestly play on basically anything. 
I play using a tiny pad I built from scratch and a keyboard stand to balance myself and I've been able to pass a few stamina 18s so far. If I can play on this goofy ass setup, I believe in you to find something that you can play on as well. Dig out an old soft pad from when you were 12, find an old rusty cobalt flux that's been in a garage for 10 years and clean it up, order an LTEC and get started right away, splurge on one of those flashy Stepmania X pads if you're able to order one, or just build something yourself. People have found success in all game modes with all kinds of pads. Everything from Demo's immaculate SMX tech setup, all the way to Yuzu's stamina pad built with Yu-Gi-Oh cards and like 30 FSR sensors attached to it. Both of these setups are for top players of their respective modes, so you can really be successful with anything given enough time and work on both the pad and your gameplay. I also want to quickly mention Dom's video about scuffed setups, and I'd highly recommend watching it. It'll give you a good idea about what people use and what people are successful with. He's also got a video about different pads that are available, and even though the video is a little old, it's still got a lot of really good information in it. But really, the moral here is just get started. Find a setup, pick stamina, tech, or mods, and go. It's really that simple. I've left links to most of the resources and discords in the description below. In my experience, all of the communities I've mentioned are extremely friendly and welcoming, and if you're willing to learn and actually read some pinned messages in the discords, they'll be more than happy to help you get started and involved in the community and the various events. After eight years of rhythm games, I can honestly say that the modern I2G community has been one of the nicest online rhythm game communities I've ever been a part of, and I'd really recommend you jump in and give it a shot. Thanks for watching, and thanks so much to my supporters on Patreon. Check out my Twitter, Twitch, and community Discord. Links are in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.